Good evening, good evening. It is, it's Tuesday the 11th of March. It's nine o'clock. You're watching Vapor Scene here on VaporTrolls.tv and I'm laughing because that music has kind of spurred on some chat in our team Skype chat because they all hate it. <laughs> but there you go. It was a little bit different this week. I'll put it back to what it was next week or I might put something else on next week. Who knows? Um, or I might do what Dave Kitson does and put some really weird stuff on beforehand. Um, yes, the Mac lads and stuff like that. Who knows? Anyway, yes, it is Tuesday. It's nine o'clock. You're watching Vapor Scene. Um, this week we are going to be looking at what happened with this all week. This e lights that I uh, talked about last week. Um, we're going to be looking at these, which are the battery safety charging bags. Hmm that uh, I touched on a few weeks ago uh, and we're kind of talking about batteries and charging quite a lot over the recent weeks with the fires and everything else uh, and Dave Dawn will be covering charging next week um, but uh, I purchased one uh, and uh, I've been using it so a bit of VT coming in um, hmm, before the first half finishes I think yes um, but before all that before all that We've got these. It's the titles. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. It's Tuesday, and I'm back again. I just keep coming back, don't I? I why? I don't know. <laughs> yes, I do, because I love it. Um, yes, it's Tuesday, 9 o'clock, and it's Vapor Scene here on VapeTrails.tv, and I'm seeing little things Skyping up on my little Skype chat, but I'm going to ignore it for a minute. Um, yes, we're going to be looking at uh, the charging bags in, uh, in a, a few minutes, uh, and we'll be looking at the result of my week. Yes, my week on this. Uh, and there's about no batcher left. No. So uh, that's good. That's gone. Uh, and I'm back to that. Oh yes. <laughs> it's been a um, it's been a difficult week using a cigar like for seven days. Um, and you'll see the VTs that I've got for you. I do use this a little bit uh, only because the battery ran out. But yeah, you'll see that in a minute. Um, but a uh, bit of news now. First. Um, I've got some news um, about the Furious Fury, aka Andy Brooks, um, because yesterday um, him and his wife had a little baby girl. So uh, congratulations to them, um, and uh, I hope she grows up to be a lovely little thing, because a lovely little girl. Yes. Um, so well done, Andy, and I think it's Nikki or Nixie, one or the other. Might have been a typo that someone sent me. But uh, congratulations from all of us are here at Vapor Trolls TV. Yeah. Um, so let's look at uh, let's look at some news stories. Now this is from last week actually, um, and Nikolites have signed a deal with Enterprise Inns, um, more than six thousand outlets as well, um, encouraging landlords to stock their products. Uh, and uh, I've got some info here. And uh, yeah, they're from Birmingham, Nikolites. Uh, an enterprise has more than 6,000 pubs and uh, they're encouraging landlords to stock the electronic cigarettes as an alternative to tobacco products. Um, now you remember recently, ooh, probably three weeks ago, we had the story that uh, the Advertising Standards Authority had banned one of their ads. Um, and now they've, uh, they've moved on from that and they're going to be in the pubs, uh, which I actually think is a good idea. Um, the managing director, uh, yes, Nikki. Uh, no, sorry, Nick High. Uh, we're delighted to announce that we have agreed an exclusive deal with Enterprise Inns to stop Nikolites at thousands of UK pubs. Um, and the bottom bit, the last few sentences there. Last year, the firm secured more than 40% of the independent retailer and convenience store market, and the firm's turnover 
increased from £6 million to £23 million. Pounds. And you'll wonder why people want to sell e-cigs. <laughs> because they are big business. And we know from recent events that uh, e-cigs are taken over from NRT uh, and we're going to take over the world. I don't care what happens in Europe, we're going to take over the world. I've decided. Yeah. Um, now, another little story uh, that came to me this morning. Um, I subscribed to The Lancet and I got an email this morning. Uh, and this is actually about smoking um, rather than vaping. But I thought it was quite an interesting story because this particular report in The Lancet Respiratory Medicine Journal, smoking and mental illness, time to break the link. Uh, and what they're saying here, what this particular correspondent is saying, is that um, there's a huge amount of mental illness within people who smoke, especially heavy smokers. Um, and they've got a concern that the high prevalence of smoking among people with mental illness, in total around 3 million of UK smokers have such illnesses. Together they light up around 40% of the cigarettes consumed in the country. And they go on to say, and I've kind of outlined a few bits in red here. So firstly they say that nicotine can positively affect mood, memory, attention span and cognitive function, all of which tend to be areas of difficulty for people with mental illness. Um, so the self-medication theory is therefore compelling and has gained traction amongst clinicians who often feel that therapeutic effects of nicotine are reason enough not to encourage patients with mental illnesses to quit smoking. But then on the flip side of that, you've got somebody saying, well, no, anxiety and depression are often elevated in smokers compared to non-smokers. And there's evidence to show that these symptoms of mental illness that are often thought to be relieved by smoking actually worsen over time. Now, go to The Lancet. You have to, you have to register in order to see some of the documents that are on there. But it doesn't cost you anything. You can just register. Um, now, myself and Dave Dorn were talking about this article earlier on, and we both have decided it's a load of rubbish. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There's people with mental illnesses who drink a lot. There's people with mental illnesses that use recreational drugs and other um, drugs. Uh, coffee, for instance. Um, you know, I use coffee and I use nicotine. I'm not particularly that um, mad um, or have any mental illness. But you're going to get that kind of prevalence in lots of different things. To link the two together, um, I don't know where the science comes in there, um, but it's just numbers, isn't it? But it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a contentious subject, that one. Um, now, moving on from that one, uh, if you've seen the uh, forums today, you will have seen this, which is in connection with the Trustfire TR001 charger of which I've got one in my hand, in a, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, but apparently they are not safe. Um, the electrical installation is not sufficient and the product does not comply with the low voltage directive and the relevant European standard EN60335. Uh, and he says they're voluntary measures. Withdrawal of the product from the market, recall of the product from users and destruction of the product. Now, in the little bit of VT that I did in relation to the charging bag, um, I used this. And I've been using this charger for two years, ever since I started vaping. It was the first charger that I bought. I've never had an issue with it. It doesn't buzz. It doesn't whir. It doesn't click. It charges. However, it does appear that this could indeed be dangerous. So it will be going in the bin, and I'll be buying like an X-Star charger. Uh, I know Daz at Save Seeks does some good ones, so I should be speaking to Daz and get myself a new one. But, yes, a lot of people have these, um, and it's probably a good idea, if you want to continue to use it, to use something, you know, keep an eye on it, for instance. Um, but you'll see in my little VT on the charging bag uh, a bit more information about electrical safety as well. Uh, and, of course, Dave said yesterday uh, on the Haze Hour that he will be covering charging next week after the... Um, First of all, the amazing bit of recalling by Keith on last night's show. Uh, and secondly, the filthy batteries <laughs> that he took to Dave's house. Uh, and uh, he was showing um, the best way to sort them out, basically, and get them to charge. So, um, yes. But before we look at the charging bag, let's look at the first part 
of my little bit of VT. And this is what I said last week. I'm going to challenge myself this week. From tomorrow morning, I'm only going to use this. Now, I have to tell you, it is a 20 milligram strength. So it's not bad. Um, it's not 24, which I'm used to, um, but it's 20. So I'm going to use this for the next few days. Uh, I might even try a week if I can get some juice into the end because I didn't buy any extra cartridges. But it looks like I can put some juice in it. Need to be careful because of the air valve, um, but I will see how I go on with that. So tonight I'm going to vape loads of 24. <laughs> and then tomorrow morning when I get in the car to Manchester, I'm going to start using this. And I will take something else with me just in case it fails. Yeah, that's what I said last week. Uh, and uh, this is the first part of my seven day journey. Marco's Cigar Like Challenge. Hello, hello. It's uh, Wednesday. Uh, it's the morning after the night before, the night I said on the last week's show uh, that I was going to do a little cigar like challenge um, with the e lights that I bought at Asda for £3.25, the rechargeable one, um, with the charger. So both of those cost me £6.50, as opposed to 24 quid for the kind of equivalent at Boots, but the Boots one does have one extra cartridge. Um, 20 milligrams, uh, and um, yes. So let's crack it open. I've already uh, cut the little plastic bits so I can get it open, because it is sealed at both ends. Uh, and there's a little tab to free the air up. So I've taken that off as well. And we have our little cigar -like Yeah. Um, and as you can see, if I show you the threading, it stands proud and it fits into the battery. Uh, and it is 510-ish. The thread is slightly different. Um, but... Uh, I might try and put a 510 Carto on there. I might not. Um, what colour is the light? Well, the light is green. Hmm. It's a very airy drawer, I have to say. A very airy drawer. Can I put my finger over one side of it, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, you can by putting your finger over the air hole you can uh, slightly make it a tighter draw. Not plumes of vapour I have to say um, but this is the first time I've used it so that might get better. Anyway I'm going to hit the motorway um, not literally, I hope. <laughs> uh, and I will check back with you this afternoon uh, and then ongoing um, over the next few days. And if I can make it to a week, I'll be very happy. Um, now, just in case I fail, just in case this fails, I've got my EVIC fully charged um, with the uh, Aero Tank on with my Dr. Lecce juice. Um, so that is there just in case because I don't want to leave myself with nothing if this dies. Um, so, there you go. Catch you in a bit. So, uh, hello. I'm about an hour into my journey now, um, and I've been on the M62 for a while. It's always a wonderful drive across the 62 to the Manchester area. Not. Um, this e lights, what can I say? It's not bad. Flavour wise, it's just 
almost flavourless to me. Maybe that's because I'm used to nice, strong flavours, especially the ones I mix myself, um, but also, you know, the ones that I do buy and I do get sent. Um, so, flavour-wise, it, it tastes like a bit like a bag. Um, but it, it's a bit nondescript, really. Um, throat it wise it's got a reasonable throat it but the vapor production is still not cracking I have to say you really do need to take a long drag to get any decent amount of vapor but we'll see what it's like when I refill the carter with some uh, of my juice and see what happens um, this is still the 20 milligram, and the packet does claim uh, 30 fags worth, so that's about 300 puffs going on the 10 puff count. Um, so in which case I've probably smoked about 6 fags. <laughs> um, no, maybe less than that actually. I've probably smoked about 4 fags worth if, um, if yeah, the, the, the smoking thing was similar. So we all know that the, the stuff we get on the packets on these is a bit hit and miss because it depends on the length of puff, how deep you inhale, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's never, you can't say it's exactly the same for everyone because it won't be, it just can't be. Anyway, uh, I'm going to carry on and um, speak to you later. Catch you bye. I've just got home um, from uh, being over in the Manchester area and I'm still using my cigar like uh, as I said I would. Um, hmm, I'm hankering, I have to say I'm hankering to use my other devices um, but I'm going to try and keep it going um, and uh, see how I get on tonight uh, and I will update you maybe tonight or um, maybe tomorrow morning who knows let's see let's see how far I can take it hmm <laughs> it's just not the same it really isn't um, do we want to end up with this just this is that what we really want well, you know what to do if you don't, don't you? Anyway, update you soon. Morning. It's uh, day two of my uh, Sigalag challenge. Oh, yes. Uh, and uh, what happened last night? Well, I got home from work. I was still going uh, reasonably good on this, and then the battery died on me. So I had to put it on charge. And I do have to admit, I had to cheat a little bit uh, and have a little um, go on the EVIC. With the aero tank with the 24 milligram juice um once it had charged i went back to that and that's all i used again last night um it started to get a little bit dry this morning so i have filled it with some of my um, homemade juice which is 24 milligram um the top is a bit of a pain to get off because there's a little plastic bit that goes through the middle as well um but it does come out in the end but you can see i've damaged it a bit slightly I don't know if you can see that yeah, you can see I kind of damaged the end a little bit getting it out uh, on the way home I thought oh will this fit in the other little cigar like that I got last year remember that with the uh, the little the little case but no completely different fitting that's the thing isn't it you see they all use different fittings so you can't chop and change between the two um, and you're stuck to that brand maybe that will change maybe they'll become interchangeable I don't know Maybe they won't. Anyway. Remember, silk cut. Remember those? The little holes. You used to put sellotape or a fag paper around. Stop the air. Well, if you hold your fingers over, like I said yesterday. You get a much better draw in my opinion. <laughs> and like I said, vapour production is not great. It's a tiny battery. 
Um, I'm not sure what the uh, resistance of the atomizer is. I'll have to check that. Um, but I'm going to continue on with it today. Um, I've got the little USB charger with me, so I'll plug it into my uh, laptop or in the car on the way home and then just put it together for a quick vape and then put it back on the charger, see how we go. But um, I can't see me doing a whole week, let's put it that way. Anyway, I have got to get to work, so I'll see you in a bit. Marco's Cigar Like Challenge Yeah, hello. That was the uh, the first couple of days, yes. Um, and it was hard, I have to say. I was uh, hankering. Um, once the original cartridge had kind of run dry-ish, um, because someone said in chat last week, don't let it go dry because it'll knacker it basically. So I didn't let it go completely dry uh, and I filled it up. And it wasn't so bad vaping on this, this stuff here, which is the Dolce Leche stuff, hazelnut stuff that I make, 70-30 PG, some ethyl maltol in it, it's very tasty. Um, not so bad because they've got the flavour and the 24 milligram hit, um, but still, when you're used to sucking vapour out of this um, and you have to go back to the little um, Eli, nah, not good. Anyway, <laughs> you can see the second part of that uh, in part two. Uh, and uh, let's have the ads. And when we come back, we'll have that and we'll have the little charging bag bit of VT. So I will see you, my friends, in two minutes. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Iveber and Iveber Elixir, best in Yorkshire for your e-cig needs. That's iveber.co.uk and iveber-elixir.co.uk. Iveber and iveber-elixir.co.uk, proud sponsors of vapertrails.tv. Now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health E Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. And it is indeed. Welcome back to part two. Hello. Now, some stuff was going through chat there uh, during a bit of VT and also during the ads, uh, so I've got a couple of questions to answer. The um, drip tip that I have on my aero tank, I actually got from um, China, um, back end of 2012, early 2013, um, from Health Cabin. Um, I don't know if they still do them. I don't know if anyone else does one similar. Um, but you can get long ones like that. I do like it. It is very nice. Uh, I've got other ones as well, obviously. Uh, and the Gary Dibley ones I like. Um, but any 510 will fit in the top, so it's, uh, it's good. But it's nice because it um, cools the vapour down if you don't like it too warm. 
Um, and it also looks funky, doesn't it really? Yeah. So that's the drip tip. Uh, secondly, someone asked me, and I sorry, but I didn't get the name. I think it might have been Whip actually, where I work in Manchester. I actually work over in the Warrington area, so I go towards Manchester, and then come off the M62 um, at Junction 12, somewhere like that, and whiz on down into Warrington. Um, and I will be there tomorrow. Strangely enough, yes. Um, I cover basically Manchester to Scotland. That's my patch. Um, so this week I'm this area. Next week I've got a week holiday, which is going to be good. Uh, and then a week after that, I'm in Scotland and in Bristol. So it's going to be uh, a busy week that week. And I don't think I get home until the Sunday. But if I didn't, if I'd got home on the Saturday, I could go to this vape meet, which is this. Yes, Matt Glug. Glugler's blog. He's got a vape meet and it's uh, on the 30th in New York and it's going to be at the Three-Legged Mare on Petergate with the full support and encouragement from the pub landlady. Yeah, starts at 2pm, reggae music from 6pm, food available from 8pm. Uh, all York Brewery beers down to £2.30 a pint for the day, excluding Ghost Ale. I don't know what Ghost Ale is, but I like the sound of it. Um, and yes, unfortunately, I'm going to be in Bristol overnight on that day. I won't get back till the Sunday. Um, otherwise, I would go to that. But don't forget that on the 5th of April, there's the Knees Meet. And the Knees Meet is at the Crown Inn. The Crown Inn um, and there will be a trailer coming shortly, I am sure. Because there usually is a trailer for the Knees Meet. Um, and as soon as we get that, it will be coming at you big time. And I'm hoping to get up to that. That's Saturday the 5th of April. Hoping to get to that one. Okay, let's move on. Uh, and we're going to look at the um, charging bag. And as I said a few weeks ago, and we're looking at charging and as Dave's mentioned this week about charging and he's looking at charging batteries next week I thought it'd be a good idea uh, and I'll put this together at the weekend um, so have a little look and see what you think we've been talking uh, over the past few weeks on various shows uh, on Dave's Hayes Hour uh, and also here on Vapor Scene uh, about battery safety and not charging in the wrong charger uh, and all that malarkey uh, and I mentioned about these things which are the uh, LiPo charging bags and they're manufactured by eFest uh, and I actually got this one from Liberty Flights um, they're just under a fiver so they're not too bad at all uh, and eFest say that the uh, LiPo guard is a fireproof bag and it's designed to stop and contain the fire caused by incorrectly or poorly functioning lithium batteries, uh, especially during charging. It's made from fiberglass woven fabric, very similar to the fireproof suits worn by firefighters. Um, so let's uh, crack it open. And here is said bag. And it has, oh wow, quite a hard um, Velcro fastener there. And if I just do that so you can see inside, you can see that is it's quite a decent sized pouch um, and it has a little slit here either side so you can get the cables. Um, it does suggest that the TR1 fits in there, um, which if I just try it, it does quite nicely fit in there. Um, and I have two batteries in here. I've got an EFS battery. Uh, a 1600 milliamp uh, and this is a, uh, a high drain 30 amp battery and this one is a 2000 milliamp and it's the Camry battery it's the one that Dave Dawn and myself got when we got the uh, Camry variable voltage variable wattage mod um, last year that if you remember was rubbish uh, it was in fact the uh, that one <laughs> which didn't make any sense at all when you put it on the scope but anyway that's by the by. Um, so I have the eFest, which is um, completely discharged, and the Camry, which was showing 42% um, uh, on the eVic before I took it out. So what eFest suggests you do um, is obviously put your batteries in your charger, power it up, and you can see there I've got both red lights on, meaning that uh, they need to be charged. They recommend you put it in the bottom, right at the bottom of the bag, and then just put the cable 
in between the little slot there and close it up and there you go that will charge away quite nicely and should anything happen should the batteries decide they're going to go pop or the charger decides it's going to go pop any fire would be contained in the bag and because there's still a gap either side because you've got a cable going through there and I can get two fingers in quite nicely any gas will vent um, but what will happen is if there is a fire you will obviously still get some smoke and that will come out of the sides but any fire would be contained now that's at this end obviously if you've got an issue with your socket end there's not a lot you can do about that what you could do if you are worried at all about charging uh, on your main circuit um, is to get yourself an RCD um, auto switch which will cut itself off it will cut the power if it detects an issue with any of the current going to your device um, from the main socket um, some new houses mine for instance has got a new consumer unit or fuse box uh, and that has got a built-in RCD and that has tripped on occasion for me uh, once when I was recharging a lithium-ion battery for my video camera lighting system uh, and once when the mains filter decided it was going to go wonky on my washing machine <laughs> of all things um, but it, it does detect any variation in current and trips off the power but as far as this goes you put your battery in and you could use a, an ego charger as well put that in um, you could put more than one battery in I'd probably only do one at a time I have to say um, the only thing that, that worries me is the heat because the batteries that are going to charge now are going to create heat and it's whether or not that heat is sizable enough so what we'll do a little bit later I'll come back and I'll check what the heat is on the outside of this pouch but also on the inside and we'll see if there are any uh, issues there um, but from first look it looks like a very sturdy bag double stitched um, fiberglass reasonably thick um, and will do the job if you have an issue it's almost worth trying to make it fail um, but I think I'd like to see it work rather than see it fail anyway I'll come back a bit later once this has been charging for a few hours and we'll see where we are I have now had uh, four lots of batteries through the charger um, while being encased in the charging bag uh, and you'll see as I'm talking a couple of um, temperature readings that I took during the charging process um, with my laser thermometer uh, and this is extremely good extremely accurate and extremely quick um, so the charging cycle has finished now um, you might be able to see the green lights in the bottom probably not but you can see them uh, in here uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the temperature of the top here uh, the temperature around the batteries and then I'll probe the inside I'll open it and then we'll look at the inside temperature and see what that is but there's a very very slight faint warmness to it um, so it really doesn't appear to be an issue whatsoever and I'll just let the ambient temperature of my hand there just to get off that bag before I, I probe it with this um, so we'll test the bottom here first where the batteries are and then we'll look at the top and there we go and that's given me a temperature of 26.8 degrees centigrade 26.6 there you go and if I just move this down and we'll point it here and you can see there it's 24.4 so there's a two degree difference between the top where there is no electrical activity and the bottom where the batteries are uh, and let's open it up very quickly and point inside and that is 26 
and it's going down. So as you can see, there's no real, there's no real heat buildup. Heat still comes out of the top, um, and if there was an issue uh, and the batteries vented, then the gases would vent outside. If there was a fire, that would be kept inside there, uh, and the smoke would come out. However, it wouldn't burst into flames. I'm liking this. I'm liking it a lot, and I think I'm going to continue using this every time I charge my batteries. Um, and like I said, for the small price of 495, um, other places might charge either more or less. I don't know, but Liberty Flight's 495 plus postage. Um, absolutely cracking addition to my vaping kit. I have to say, I'm well impressed. Anyway, let's go back to the studio. Yeah, and there you go. Now, here's the thing. You might think it's overkill to put your batteries in a, a charging bag and charge them. Um, you might think that it's going to heat up too much because uh, you need ventilation. There is a the ventilation in coming out from the top. And yes, I could get two fingers in. Thank you to the people in our Skype chat that pointed that out. <laughs> um, but it didn't get that warm. It, you know, it was as warm as it would be without it being in the bag. Um, now I've got smoke alarms in my house, in every room, um, and if there was a fire, it would go off. Um, however, you shouldn't really leave them unattended, like you shouldn't go to bed with batteries on charge. It's not a good idea. Um, but if you're around and about in the house doing things and you just want to be extra safe, extra vigilant, or whatever, charging bag might be a good idea. Um, I quite like it, but then I've got <laughs> got a charger. I've got a charger that was recalled today because it was unsafe. So, you know, when I buy a new charger, um, maybe it won't even fit in the bag, and maybe I won't need to use it. But as I said a few weeks ago, I was going to get one so I could bring it to you. So that's what I did. So there you go. Um, now then, Disco Des mentioned something about Scrumpy when I'm in Bristol. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> PM me, Disco does, because um, I'll be there on the Saturday night. We can go and grab a few if you like. Um, okay, so time is moving on, and I've got this last bit of VT for you, which is the second and final part of my struggle of a week on that single hike. <laughs> yes, so um, here it is. Marco's Cigar Like Challenge. Hello, back in the car. Um, I've just been out to get some bits and pieces uh, and I didn't manage to do a, a video blog entry, whatever, <laughs> yesterday, uh, being Friday. Um, so today is Saturday, uh, the 8th of March. So it's been Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four days. Um, and I have to say that I'm quite I'm quite impressed at how it's going. However, a little caveat, and that is that the battery as I use it is not lasting as long day on day. You'd think that it would be relatively similar um, throughout the course of a week, wouldn't you? Um, but I'm not getting the same length of time every day uh, that I would expect to from this Sigalite battery. I'm also using the homemade juice, which is my hazelnut dolce leche caramel, which is uh, it's about 70 PG, 30 VG or thereabouts. Um, using that filling up the end um, as I mentioned earlier on in the show um, and I've had to resort to using my EVIC um, for a little bit of time in the evenings just while this is charging but it's the same juice so you know you can kind of correlate that together if you like. Uh, The question is, would I be able to survive if this was all that was available? 
and at 20 milligrams, not 24? That's the big question. And I was musing on that point as I was driving home from town. Um, and I was thinking, if this was the only thing that was available, and if it was 20 milligrams, would I go back to smoking? Or would I just get used to the lower nicotine strength? Or, or indeed, if I was still able to mix my own, would I just mix my own and use these? If that's what was just what was available. But I'm looking at it from my point of view. Um, and I'm not looking at it from a smoker's point of view who wants to switch to vaping. If somebody's on 40 or 60 cigarettes a day, will they be able to last on 20 milligrams or will they just keep failing? Um, especially with the battery use, especially with having to buy cartridges at eight quid a box for two. Um, and I, my feeling is that no, they probably wouldn't. They probably wouldn't last it out um, they would have to get two or three, maybe even four batteries. So they've always got one charged, they've always got one on charge. Um, and oodles of cartridges because, you know, one cartridge is effectively what they're saying, 30 fags. Um, we think it's more like 20. So the health benefits are there. Understandably, they're there. The cost benefit is there-ish because you're looking at eight pounds for the equivalent of a couple of packet of cigarettes as opposed to eight pound a packet for cigarettes. So yes, there is the health bit there and there is also a little bit of cost there as well. Whether or not the faff um, and the having to go down to just 20 milligrams will keep people off them and keep people on cigarettes is, that's the question. And I'm not convinced that at 20 milligrams that somebody who isn't a vapor yet but is considering it, if this went through and this was all that was available, whether or not they'd make the switch um, or think it was worth it or just carry on with using conventional lit tobacco. Anyway, that is it for today. Um, I'm going to keep using it. I'm going to try my best and keep using it until Tuesday um, and um, we'll see what happens. <sighs> Ta-ta for now. It's day seven. Day seven of my sicker like challenge that I started last week. Uh, and with the exception of a, a little bit of time in the evenings using my Evic. Um, using the same juice that I've been using in here though. So exactly the same strength juice, just a different delivery method for a, uh, a few hours a night um, because obviously the battery uh, has been wearing out and I've had to recharge it. Um, and maybe I should have got a couple of batteries and maybe I should have got some more of the Cartos um, of the same strength of 20 that came with it. Um, but, you know, it's kind of uh, a test and it's kind of not, isn't it really? It's just to see how I would go about it and how I would go on. Um, and it hasn't been too bad. The actual Carto is still working. Uh, it's still plugging away. The battery's not lasting as long on a day-to-day -day basis as it did when I first started a week ago. So I can't see these lasting um, uber amounts of time. Um, and I'm also not sure how long this would keep going either. But it's lasted a week, which isn't that bad, is it really? If you are able to uh, take the end out, which is easily enough done, if you are able to do that and you are able to put some juice in it, then all well and good. But I still come back to the same issue um, that I looked at at the beginning, and that was, if this was the only thing available, if 20 milligram in these cartridges was only available, that was all you could get, would I be able to survive on it and it's kind of yes and no I'm sure I would get used to 20 milligram strength juice um, and I'm sure that I could crack on with it and maybe not go back on to lit tobacco but after two years uh, of not using lit tobacco 
I certainly wouldn't want to do that unless I'd explored every single avenue first. And like I said a couple of days ago, um, I've been looking at it from my point of view and not from the point of view of a current smoker who wants to give up using lit tobacco and wants to use these instead. Um, whether or not they would find it too much of a, a hassle um, or if they'd get, you know, peed off with the batteries running out and everything else when if they've got a packet of fags and they've got a lighter or a match or a gas cooker, um, you know, you can light your fag. So obviously there are limitations in using e-cigs just as there are limitations of using lit tobacco. But I certainly will not be going back to lit tobacco um, should everything go completely pear-shaped. But, you know, we've still got hope. We've still got hope. We've still got all the things that we're doing, all the things that we are signing up to and petitioning. And we're still talking to our MPs, aren't we? Yes, we should be, our MPs and our MEPs. Unfortunately for me, as you know, Linda McAvan is my MEP. So there's not a lot of point in talking to her because we all know exactly how she feels. However, I might try and see if she will see me again on camera and um, see what happens. So I think I might send you an email and see what happens, or send her secretary an email and see if, uh, if she responds or whether or not she was scared off after the last time. <laughs> anyway, I am now gonna stop using this. I'm gonna go back to using my EVIC, which I have to say, on Saturday, I had it in my pocket in, and I got into the car and I knocked it uh, and the end came off and one of the wires came out. I was gutted. I was absolutely gutted. So when I got back home, solder iron came out and I mended it. Um, but now I just need to glue. I need to put some super glue on, the, on that connection because it is now a little bit loose and I don't want to snap the cables again because they're very, very small. And these big hands are not good for dealing with very, very small bits of wire. Anyway, let's go back to the studio. Marco's Cigar Like Challenge. Yeah, that was it. It's gone now. Um, I did a week um, as best I could. <laughs> uh, little bits in the evening when I had to resort to using the EVIC. Uh, and it is all better now. Oh yeah, it's all better now. Um, but I do need to get some super glue on the uh, connector there because uh, if I knock it again, it will come apart again. Uh, Disco Des, get me on Facebook. Um, you can get me on there or you can Twitter me, uh, tweet me. Um, or you can just send a PM to one of the team and they can uh, pass it over. Um, I will get hold of you at some point. So, there you go. And uh, yes, uh, 45 minutes. <laughs> we will get to the hour at some point. I need to have more material for you to get to the hour. Um, but we will do that at some point. Um, now, don't forget, DE Talk has started over on the other channel. So if you are a German speaker, you can head over to uh, DE Talk right now. Um, and of course there is RY4 Radio every night of the week, so at 10 o'clock there will be a show going on on RY4 Radio. Tomorrow night it is Team Talk, Thursday night it is VT Talk, Sunday it is Dave's Tucker Box with hopefully Dave Kitson and more than likely Mr Dave Dawn. Uh, and that takes us back to Monday for the Haze Hour with Dave, Cat, and Keith. I'll be back next Tuesday for Vapor Scene. Until then my friends, you know what it's all about. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.
Vapazine is proudly sponsored by Health Evape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.